I have another very interesting project for you today. Today is the 17th of April 2019 and I think word has got around that I'm able to transform all these ugly ducklings, for want of a better expression, into princesses or princes. So this tree, like most of these subjects to come to me for transformation and for restyling has quite an interesting history to it. The history of this tree is that it was owned by a lady about 30 years ago and 25 years ago she decided to give it to her daughter and of course the daughter half-heartedly kept it in her garden but as you can see it is very badly neglected more than half the tree is dead this complete branch is dead this branch is dead the top is partly dead and these branches are almost dead and of course she kept it against the wall and of course you see nothing has grown at the back it's completely bare at the back so if ever there was a problem tree, this seems to be a classic problem tree. Now, I almost refused to take it in because she said that, oh yes, I know you can do it, but there are some trees that are so difficult that I think it would take too much nervous energy and uh, cerebral uh, effort to think of solutions for this tree. I don't know where she bought this tree from, it's certainly not from our nursery, but she says that she was given this tree 25 or 30 years ago and then she passed it on to her daughter and the daughter didn't care for the tree and eventually the daughter decided, you have it back, I don't want this tree anymore. So she's got hold of this tree and she felt that it really needs a makeover. But what can I do to this? You know, more than half of it is dead and all the branches are so long and straggly. It's no longer compact. Uh, so it's only got tall height to it. And in bonsai terminology, we would call this raw material. You would start from this sort of material to make bonsai from scratch. But I always believe that there is no such thing as an impossible tree or impossible material. So whenever I get material like this, I always begin by analyzing the tree to see what I can do with it. Because this side is dead, I can't make this a conventional tree in a conical shape with branch here, branch there and a conical top. Also because it's a very tall tree, the only possibility is a literati tree. I think the literati tree uh, has a lot of possibilities. So I'm thinking more or less of a literati style. However, not everyone in the West understands or appreciate literati trees. I remember about 20 or 30 years ago when I just started the nursery most of my trees were homemade trees and even in those days I was very fond of making literati style trees and one of my Japanese growers and suppliers came to the UK to try and drum up business and he looked around the nursery he says you know Chansan all you ever do is literati bunjin style and uh, he wasn't saying it as criticism but he said that the Bunjin style is a very sophisticated style and only uh, Chinese scholars are able to appreciate it. After all, the Bunjin or the Literati is a Chinese invention. These famous Chinese scholars went into the mountains and they lived in these little caves and uh, they became hermits and they did these paintings and they produced trees in this brushstroke type painting. So here we are with this tree. This back, because the bark has disappeared or died off, could be made into driftwood. So this is a possible 
front. But as you know, a lot of literati trees are put in round pots, either drum pots or um, these primitive pots. We could probably get away with having a tree which is viewable from all sides. Again with literati style. Literati style is a tall silver style of the trunk. That low branch there, although it's dead, making it driftwood may or may not be interesting. I don't think it's going to add to the character of the literati tree. So I'm going to take quite a bold decision rather than make a stub of a gin I'm going to cut it off completely. I'm not going to use the axe or cleaver that seems a bit drastic so I'm just going to saw it with the saw Interesting to count the rings. The rings are quite interesting. I dare say this is an old tree. So the rings may be at least 30 if not more. So removing that trunk has already cleaned the tree up quite a bit. These we can wire tight. So I am now in a quandary because I can see that this tree has so many possibilities in rid of it. Some people like putting gins just for the sake of making a gin. I don't think it's serving any purpose to get rid of that. So already we cleaned up the line. And because literati trees is about beautiful line, I've got a nice clean line on that. So, I've already cleaned that up. This could be quite nice. I think this is too confusing there. I will probably make that driftwood. But the more I look at it, I think what was originally the back of the tree, I think I'm going to keep it as the back because this side, the original front, could be quite interesting. But because there are two branches so close together, I think one of them has to go. And if I had the choice, this is more interesting because it's contorted. That is rather straight. So let me get rid of the one at the back and make a short gin with that. If the gin turns out to be not very interesting, I can always get rid of it completely. So I'll make a partial cut and tear it in the front. I'm just wiring these pads so that they lie flat. See, so just removing the dead branches has tidied the tree up, so it's not looking such a mess now. Carry on wiring. Normally a literati would just have 
the top portion, you won't have this lower part, but because this is such an interesting limb, contorted naturally, I've decided to keep that. But the tall, slender trunk still gives it the literati character. Literati trees are best done with evergreen trees, and in fact, evergreen conifers are best. Pines are the favorite. Juniper is also possible. It's very seldom that we see broadleaf trees being used. Although in China I've seen Sagaretia and many other broadleaf varieties used as well. It's already looking very clean and the lines are quite nice. Right, I'm continuing to do the wiring. As you can see, with a lot of these trees, once you've done the wiring to every single branch, it will be all right. You notice I've now put it down on the low turntable because I didn't fancy climbing on a ladder to do the wiring. Climbing on a ladder has its dangers, so I decided not to climb a ladder but to work on the terra firma instead. But I'll put it back on the high turntable afterwards. I love the literati style, especially with pines, because pine trees do in fact grow in this tall, lanky fashion. <laughs> and in the UK, we have a lot of Scots pines that grow in this style. So it's a very natural style that I'm trying to recreate. When I do the wiring, I only have a vague idea as to what the tree is going to look like. Once all the wires are in place, I then position the branches by twisting the wide branches around. So if I'm not speaking very much at this point, it's really that I'm just doing a very tedious chore, which is just wiring every single twig and branch. a very boring exercise. I've got to ask myself, do I need this or not? Of course, being a literati style, sparseness is of the essence, so cutting away branches is really quite easy. Do I need this? For literati style is too much. Take it off. Make driftwood with this. See, this is a bit of dead branch, and once it's dead, the bark doesn't come off that easily. Oh, surprisingly, it is coming off fairly easily without much effort, but the live bark, that really comes off easily. I'd better cut it here so that the bark doesn't go too far back. The gin pliers are of great use. The gin pliers have their uses and that's what it's used for making gin. So just a little hint of gin here and there. I haven't gone over the top. In fact, I still am wondering whether I need that gin or not. We shall see. I think we've done all the wiring. We'll now look at the roots. Right, I've just taken it out of the pot. And as you can see, this white stuff here Many people, when they see this white around the roots, they think it's some sort of insect infestation. 
or they think it is what they call white fly or root aphid. But this is what we call mycelium. It's a mycorrhiza, that means it's a mushroom growth. And the mycorrhiza or the mycelium is a beneficial fungus. Can you just hold it for me, Steve? Let's tilt it up. As you can see, the whole pot is covered in this white mycelium. And that's usually a sign of a very healthy uh, root system. And the mycelium is a beneficial fungus which helps the tree. And the tree, in turn, uh, provides nutrients for the mycelium to grow. So we can just put it up there and tease the roots. And let's see where we go with this tree. So we've prepared the pot, we've put uh, two, two wires to the four holes to tie the tree in. Bit of mesh, as I've always told you, I don't bother to anchor it in. It Once it's there, it'll never move. So at the base, usually with mature pines, I prefer to put a bit of huga for drainage. This is the huga particles. It looks like kanuma, but it's not. So just a bit of that for the drainage, not a great deal. Because this is such a shallow pot, I don't want to waste too much space filling it with uh, too much of the drainage layer. And then, after that, I will put a bit of sphagnum moss so that the roots touch the sphagnum moss. This is my trick. I'm a great believer in using sphagnum moss because I believe it really helps the roots to regenerate very quickly. And then I use a lot of the old compost back here. And you must be wondering why I'm so miserly using the old compost. I use it for a very good reason. As you can see, the old mycelium is in here. In this mycelium, like the mushroom spores, this will help to produce more mycelium. So because this is lovely and fresh soil, I will use a lot of this again. So let's put the tree in and we will proceed to position it and in fact some of this old soil is so good and there's so much mycelium in it. I'm going to use a lot of the old soil again. It's, it's not putrid, it smells very nice so I will use a lot of this old soil. We've hardly cut any root, we've just reduced the root ball. And this is the tree. If we turn the tree around, the value of using these primitive and literati pots is because they are essentially round pots. So you can decide which to use as the front and which to use as the back. Uh, now, this was my back, but this looks quite nice like that. Although it's one sided, it's very nice that way. And this, although was my original front, it's quite nice like this. Let me stand back and look at it. I will put it against the white background in a minute. Um, I know a lot of the purists would argue that literati tree, this branch is too low. If I can have a bit of that plastic, I'm aware of all these different nuances because we always get a lot of very clever people who point out, oh, I should have done that, I should have done that. Now, this would be more of a classic literati tree with just high branches, none of the lower branches. So that is a possibility. But because I respect my customers' 
uh, wish that I don't cut too much off. I've kept that, so it's still got a literati style to it. And because this low branch is a bit contorted with that natural twist, that's quite nice. So I decided to keep that. So I hope you enjoyed this literati restyling exercise. And keep the comments coming in.